dollars and cents in partnership with OFX. Great exchange rates for your global payments. Visit OFX.com slash save. OFX, moving money globally. Welcome to Dollars and Cents on CNA 938. I'm Stanley Leong with Chewy Lin. Now, you've heard that phrase, every dollar counts. And it couldn't be more true for small businesses with a careful eye and an almost obsessive attention on their bottom line. Now, every business will incur cost in their operations, but is there a way of minimizing it and improving cash flow? Well, that's what we'll be discussing today with our guests who are from OFX. It's an online foreign exchange and payments company. Joining us with handy tips for business owners and also raising the idea of hedging as a business consideration for you are Sean Wee, head of Singapore with OFX, and Adam Ismail, head of Dealing for Asia at OFX. Well, thank you both for joining us today. Tell us what are the biggest factors that contribute to and erode a company's bottom line. Sean, perhaps we can start with you. Definitely. Hello, Stanley and William. It's good to be back. Um, Now, when we talk about factors impacting the bottom line, uh, that can encompass many variables like uh, operating revenue, income from assets and investments such as rent, cost of production, cost of goods, uh, marketing expense, labor, shipping, and so on. Uh, Broadly speaking, right, uh, revenue is a positive contributor and business expenses or costs negatively impacts the bottom line. So naturally, if you want a healthier bottom line, you either increase the operating revenue or you decrease the business costs. Right, right. And we also want to find out from you, Sean, about uh, minimizing costs. Uh, Definitely key to how a company's bottom line would look. But what about foreign exchange? Would foreign exchange be one of those cost factors that can be reduced? And if it can be uh, reduced, uh, how can we do so? Um, it, it, it's not a very simple answer to that. Basically, what I would say is that foreign exchange can be an added complication to the costs. So if you take, for example, a business that uh, imports seafood from Japan and sells them locally here in Singapore, uh, assuming they source from a cheaper supplier, so they lower their cost of goods, but if the Japanese yen strengthens against the Singapore dollar, um, you will have to use more Singapore dollars to buy Japanese yen. This will then offset or eat into whatever savings from the cheaper pricing. In fact, since the currency markets always fluctuate, the cost of imports always vary. Right? So you can never be certain what is your cost. It will not, never be stagnant throughout your dealings with the suppliers. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you can reduce the foreign currency cost by using a company like OFX to attain more competitive FX rates you know, and also prob- probably save on remittance fees. But it's not really solely about reducing this foreign currency uh, exchange costs. Uh, it's also about how a business can actively manage its exposure to the currency volatility. Right? Um, and and if, if I may, right, let me cite a recent uh, research from Eastern Partners Asia. They are a research specialist within the finance industry, and this was published in September uh, 2020, so it was very recent. What was found was that 64% of SMEs in Asia suffered from FX losses between February and August this year. And, and we know this year has been very volatile, right, with right. the pandemic going on. Mm-hmm. And, and what, how this impacts um, such SMEs is that um, the losses amount up to US $71,000, right, because of under-hedging, right, not protecting themselves against the movements of the markets. So this size of amounts can seriously impact an SME's bottom line. All right, let's bring in Adam now. So Adam, when it comes to the managing of finances and FX risks, MNCs have chief financial officers and teams of accountants to rely on, but it's different for SMEs, startups and sole traders. So what advice would you have for you know, the owners of such small businesses so they can understand what FX risks their businesses are exposed to? Sure thing. Uh, thanks, Stanley Whalen. Um, I think my advice would be, you know, you can look at two main key considerations. Um, first, uh, to identify and understand the risk the business faces, um, and then assessing your own individual risk profile. That way you can strike a balance between the two and move forward with a suitable approach that way. Um, for example, let's say your business is import heavy. Uh, you would face questions about supply chain management, you know, price per shipment, logistics, and so forth. So you would definitely need to consider the size and complexity of each specific component that allows your business to run efficiently. Next, 
Um, I would say ask yourself what your comfort level is when tolerating movement and volatility. Are you naturally risk adverse? You know, can you afford to diversify your strategy? Um, it's important to define some broad objectives ahead of transacting. That way you can then select the appropriate tools or products to, that suit your objectives um, and then review what's possible so you can achieve and ultimately define success. Um, and I think a couple of additional points uh, that are very important is firstly, time is your friend, so use it to your advantage by planning ahead. And the second point, and I cannot stress this enough, set yourself up to make rational and measured decisions because you never want to make a move that's purely emotional or off market led or someone else's success just because you feel like you're missing out. You have to make informed decisions for yourself and your business. That would be my advice. Yeah, very handy tips, especially so in times of you know emergencies or when when the economy turns and and everybody is just a little slightly in a panic mode. Uh, that's where you really want to make rational and informed decisions, like you say. We also want to talk more about hedging because Sean brought up that term just a while ago, talking about being uh, under uh, hedged uh, in some sense. Uh, let's talk about hedging um, and the concept of it and how SMEs can consider this. Before, before we get into the how, uh, Adam, do enlighten us on what hedging is. Uh, certainly. Um, so what hedging is, or the basic concept of hedging, is basically managing your foreign exchange and currency risk exposure. You're taking measures to use products and tools to help minimize movement in the markets that may adversely affect your operating costs and bottom line. Um, as an example, like I can look back to the Singapore US dollar exchange rate in March, uh, where Singapore dollar dropped more than 8%. Um, and let's take a scenario where your business is importing goods from the US and you need to exchange Singapore dollars into US dollars. So you're aware of how COVID has impact economies. You're worried about price fluctuation and volatility due to the measures taken, uh, knowing that it will affect production and logistics and so forth. So in the scenario, if you decided not to prepare or consider hedging, a, supply, a supplier payment, for example, would have cost you this 8% difference. Not only this, but if you had multiple payments to suppliers, it would be quite costly overall to your bottom line. Um, so hedging would allow you to achieve certainty over your costs, and you undoubtedly would have saved considerably in this scenario. You know, as Sean mentioned, you know, um, SMEs in Asia have lost 74,000 US dollars in half a year because of under hedging. Um, another scenario very recent is, you know, we can take a look at the results of the US election and recent vaccine news from Pfizer and BioNTech as another scenario for market movement, for example. You know, let's say if we anticipate moving forward with this vaccine uh, and should the Biden-Harris administration help stabilize the recovery of the US economy, there potentially could be US dollar strength which again comes into play that affects SMEs that rely on the Singapore US dollar exchange rate to run their business. Um, so yeah, these, these examples and scenarios are only one currency pair if you think about it. Uh, imagine being able to hedge through multiple movements and different currency pairs. I think that really defines the profit loss of the company um, and just the concept of hedging overall. All right, so uh, tell us how does hedging work? Um, so the how, you know, I think through the OFX service, um, how hedging works is um, you basically can choose different products and tools to help manage your risk. And I'll give you an example of three of the tools that we use. First one being a forward exchange contract. So this tool allows you to lock in the live exchange rate at the time of execution for settlement at a later date. So the previous example I used, if you secured the exchange rate ahead of time, you would have ended up saving the 8% movement cost. So you can settle up your payment uh, by paying your supplier in two weeks' time, you get your shipment, and you protect the potential cost from impacting your overall expenses. Um, another product is a limit order. Um, this tool allows you to set a target exchange rate that you'd like to achieve so that if the market ends up moving and reaches this level, you automatically secure the exchange rate and would not have to worry about any further volatility or price movement. Um, and for people who don't, you know, for people who just want to be notified about market movement but don't necessarily wish to commit and secure an exchange rate, um, a tool that we use is a rate alert. So it allows you to set alerts that are sent by email or SMS to notify you of how the market is trending so you remained informed. Um, you can then explore exchange rates freely at your convenience. So again, it's, it's a variety of tools that are used um, that are available for businesses based on their strategy and goals. And that's the how. 
Yeah, Adam, you mentioned about securing exchange rates ahead of time. But how do we know that uh, that ahead of time period, which which could be now or which could be later, um, is actually a good time to secure that uh, rate that is current? Because we don't know if the rates might be more favorable tomorrow. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, uh, and and that's the thing about uh, using forward exchange contract. Um, again, it's it's really important to look at say how market trends have been moving, um, and then you can do a number of cost analysis. Um, to, to just actualize different costs. So you can look at different price points um, when it comes to exchange rates and you look at the different supplier payments that you're looking at making. So I think in the end, um, you know, no one has a crystal ball, so you can't really say where the rates are going to move. But I think the more prepared you are, the more you, you formulate the numbers itself, I think you end up getting a better idea and you have more confidence in your strategy Let's uh, return to Sean now and, and understand more about OFX and I believe there would be a complementary FX risk uh, consult uh, that can be put in place in order for companies and, and business owners to learn more about improving their company's bottom line and reducing FX costs and risks. Sean, tell us more about how our listeners can do that. Right. Um, so what the listeners can do is basically drop us um, the contact at OFX.com slash sales and we'll then get in touch with them and explore further with them. Um, and, and, and usually what happens in such uh, consult as well, so we don't charge for this, is essentially understanding the business because every business is different, right? So um, how do they price uh, uh, their products to customers? Uh, what's their order to pay process? You know, what's the currency pair in which they're exposed to the markets? Um, and understanding how the business operates and how they're currently managing these uh, foreign exchange risks. Um, and then be able to tell them, you know, with OFX, you know, how can we then help them? Right. How much information would a business need to divulge to OFX, uh, say, at this complimentary session? Um, whatever that is meaningful for the, for the business to, to understand um, what the risk entails for them, um, how much... Uh, having a hedging strategy or you know perhaps they're not even suitable for having a hedging strategy because of the uh, different variations of, of how they operate so really essentially it's, it's really um, at a comfort level of the business clients um, to be able to uh, be able to understand how can the solutions that OFX can offer help their business all right. I'll give both of you uh, final uh, words to, to encourage our listeners with regard to how they can continue to look at reducing costs, improving cash flow, um, and all other important tips that uh, you'd like to leave them with before we say our goodbyes. Um, Sean, we'll begin with you, and then we'll wrap up with Adam as well. Final thoughts. I think um, the, the currency markets have always been volatile, right? Uh, even much more so uh, this period of time where we actually have a global pandemic that affects everyone uh, in, in this world. Um, so, you know, it, it's really important in terms of transformation, right? Is there something that you can undertake? Is there something different that you can decide on or discover uh, for your own business, right? Um, how else can you optimize the way that you're operating to be able to uh, reduce this cost or give you certainty over costs, right? So they can better manage your bottom line. And, you know, hopefully, you know, businesses, SMEs will be more, um, uh, uh, receptive to undertaking such discussions, you know, and knowing before they, they decide on what, what they wish to do. Right. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Adam? Yeah, I echo Sean's comments. You know, I, I think, you know, when I, when I was on the show two weeks ago, um, the one thing that I stressed um, that I thought was very important was to, to remain prepared, you know, as a service at OFX. I think it's, uh, being able to have these conversations will really open up the dialogue with businesses. I think sometimes businesses overlook it. Um, you know, they could be too busy. They could be worried about other factors. So being able to have a conversation and open dialogue on what, the business requirements are, you know, what uh, what thoughts they have, you know, what might be worrying them. Um, I think there is a certain confidence and comfort level that we can provide um, in terms of providing that necessary support because we are expert in, experts in this field. Um, so, yeah, I think, again, it's showing businesses that we have the ability to support um, and that we are able to provide comfort knowing that we can take a look and see what's happening in the market and provide relevant tools uh, that suits their needs.
Appreciate both your inputs on this matter. Adam Ismail is the head of uh, dealing for Asia at OFX, and we've also been hearing from head of Singapore with OFX, Sean Wee. Remember that if you like a non-obligatory FX risk consult or quick demo, you can fill up the form at OFX.com slash save, that's S-A-V-E. And we once again would like to thank Sean and Adam for joining us on today's edition of Dollars and Cents on CNA 93. Gentlemen, have a great day ahead. Thank you very much. Before making any decisions based on the information in our program, please consult your own financial advisors to take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, and individual needs. Dollars and cents in partnership with OFX. Great exchange rates for your global payments. Visit OFX.com slash save. OFX, moving money globally.